Glory to God. Isn't the Lord good? I want to start out today. We're in what we've called the whole summer uh, theme is the life of faith. I want to talk to you about something about that's involved in the life of faith this morning. And uh, also the word of the Lord for this year is harvest. And so we want the Lord will tie that in. And uh, also had a great experience this week. We want to talk about that and, and stir your hearts. I talk about the ministry of angels this morning and dispatching angels. That's part of the life of faith. Dispatching angels is part of the life of faith. Amen. Amen. They are harvest helpers for you in your harvest. And so we're going to talk about this this morning. Would you pray and agree with me and believe God with me for utterance this morning? I've got so much in my head and I want to get out what the Lord wants to get out. Amen. Amen. Let's agree and let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the gifts and callings of God. And by faith, Father, I step in. I've stepped in to that role that you have given to me and are transitioning me into that anointing. Thank you, Lord, for feeding their faith and elevating the the experience of Christ in all of our lives. To you be the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, I had a wonderful, wonderful experience this week and it didn't have anything to do with our anniversary, although that was great too. But here's what I'm talking about. Uh, I prayed and sent the angels out to find our checkbook. Now, I just, I learned about this years ago. We'll talk about it. I pray, angels, you go out, bring that checkbook back to me. And you know what? They did. I had looked for that checkbook. I went back in the account and looked. The last check I wrote was in the middle of April. It was, it was long gone. <laughs> it was that gone. And I kind of toyed around with praying about it. But you know, I, I had to do this in faith. Not just playing with it. Now, we learned about sending angels out on assignment to find lost things and bring them back years ago. Way back in 1979, when Joy and I made our first trip down to Rama, we went down with two other couples, one from our Sunday school class and a couple of their friends. They were a little bit older than us. Really, we respected them. And frankly, I was a little bit nervous around them uh, just because they were older. They knew more and, and just a little insecure being younger. And also, there was another lady went with us, and her name was Naomi Egley. Now, if you've heard, if you've seen our Harvest Vision video that we have here at the church, it's on the website if you want to see it. I refer in there to an evangelist named David Egley. Well, Naomi is David's mom. No, Naomi was a part of the church that Gary Crowell started in Mount Pleasant. And she was what the Bible would call a mother in Israel. Now, that means she was a woman of God. She knew the Lord. And she spent a lot of time in prayer and in studying the Bible. She was leading prayer prayer groups. She was mentoring other women in in the ways of the Lord. She knew God. And it was a 12-hour drive from our hometown to to Ramah. 12 hours in a church van that, that the church loaned us. And all the way down there, Naomi was praying or she was sharing with us. And as she shared, she was a farm wife. They lived on a farm out in the country. And she was sharing with us how she would have jewelry that was missing or she'd lose something, not be able to find it. And she would pray. And well, before I tell you that one, let me tell you this one. As a farm wife, she would, pray, she would command the angels when the cows got out and got in, out into the corn. And if you farmers, you know, that's difficult to to get them out of the corn. When the cows got out and got out into the cornfield, she, she'd command the angels, she'd send the angels to go out and bring the cows back. And those cows would stop, turn around, and come back into the pen. When she lost things, she'd command the angels. And she's telling us this all the way down to Tulsa for 12 hours. You know, I'm, I'm 24 years old. I'm just learning some things. And here's this, saint of God, this saintly woman of God, this very experienced person of God telling us about these things and showing us scriptures about it. And she'd tell how when she lost things, she would send the angels out to get it 
And she would open her back door in the morning, and there they would be in a brown paper sack on the back step. The angels bringing them back. And so we're hearing this thing. Oh, and, and in case you're thinking, oh, I don't know if I believe that. Well, it's too late for me. I, I've already, I believed it and I've seen it. And we're walking in it and have been since that time. Because we got down to Tulsa to the meeting. And I stayed in an apartment with, with Gary Crowell and, and the guys. And the girls on the trip stayed in a hotel. Well, after the several days, we got ready to come home. And Joy couldn't find the money. That, that we had set aside for the hotel room. I mean, looked all through her stuff, couldn't find it. Well, we stopped at a convenience store uh, on the way out of town. And before we got out of the van, someone suggested, I can't remember who, suggested, let's send the angels out to bring it back. And by that time, yeah, let's do it. So we commanded the angels to go out and bring that money back. And you know, when Joy got up to the counter in that store to take care of her stuff and stuck her hand in her pocket, there was three folded up $20 bills. They would brought the money back. Amen. Hmm? Hotels were cheaper then. Yeah, hotels were cheaper then. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, maybe you'd have been more impressed if I'd have said, the money she needed to pay for the hotel for all week was in her back pocket. Maybe that would have stirred your hearts more. (laughs) Well, whatever the amount, just move a zero, add a zero. The point is, the angels went out and got it back. And I, and last week, after doing without that checkbook, I'm not to understand, I wasn't real worried about it because I kept looking at the account and nobody was, taking money out. And I didn't know whether I'd left it someplace, whether it'd fallen someplace. Or... But I finally got to the point where this, to me, with me, this got serious. And so I, I sent the angels out. Angels, you go out and, and bring that checkbook back to me. Reunite me with that checkbook. And then this thought came to mind. Well, I don't really need to, you don't really need to have it back. You know, you don't really need to put that much pressure on yourself to believe that you're going to have the checkbook back. Just, you know, just that it's no problem. And I was really for a moment tempted to go there just in my thoughts. Anybody know what I'm talking about? To, to compromise that. But it just rose up. No, we're not doing that. We're not going weak like that. We're not, I'm not compromising like that. I want the checkbook back, and I'm not having anything less. Yeah. Thank you, Father, for the angels bringing that checkbook back to me. And I know in times like this, the Lord guides your steps. He causes you to think in line with His will. You don't even consciously realize sometimes what the Lord is doing in your life. But He's working in us to will and to do of His good pleasure. So I ended up back at the mail basket. We've got a basket where we stick mail. And if any of you got a mail basket, you know that a lot of other things, the mail ends up in that basket. But I had gone through that basket a half a dozen times, taking everything out of it, looking for the checkbook. The checkbook was not in that mail basket until the angels of God brought it back and stuck it in that mail basket. <laughs> Hallelujah. And there it was. Glory to God. I've got my checkbook back. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I had, to, I had to do it by faith. Here's what I want you to, to catch out of this couple things. The angels will go out and bring stuff to you, but I had to do it by faith. Amen. By faith, not just toying with it. Faith is a real thing. It's a genuine thing. And your heart's got to be in it. Your spirit's got to be engaged in it. She's not going out of the room because I said something wrong. She's got to go order pizza for membership class, just in case. You know how people think, oh, I wonder what Pastor Joy, what she got upset about what Pastor Lauren said. (laughs) Listen, if Pastor Joy got upset about something Pastor Lauren said, it wouldn't take her walking out of the room to know it. I've got, she got to look. And you've been married a long time. You, you know when you have. 
Well, let's thank you for laughing. <laughs> I had to do that by faith, by faith, not just toying with it. I had to be serious with it. I had to be genuine with it. I had to, you know, the, the, the gospel of John, Jesus said, those who worship me, worship God, must do so in spirit and truth. In other words, you've got to put your heart into it, not just your head. Faith is of the heart, not just the head. You say, well, how do I know the difference? Well, let me ask you a question. You gentlemen, did you tell your wife you loved her this morning? Or you ladies, did you tell your husband you loved him this morning? Or think about the last time you did it. <laughs> did you say that out of your head? Or did you say it out of your heart? heart. See, it's easy to tell the difference. And where faith is not of the head. Amen. It's not just a, a wink to something. It's not just a notion. And, and well, if something turns out, that's okay. No, faith is, believing is of the heart. And you engage your spirit in it. Just like when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't be mistaken to just thinking this is a head thing. This is a very real heart thing. Of believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and making him Lord of your life. Acknowledge him as Lord. That's the, that's the thing that brings a miracle. Is when you put your heart faith in the Lord Jesus. And aren't we glad we did that? Yeah, man. Amen. And if you haven't done that, you can do that this morning. It's, this is like harvesting. It's like harvesting. Now, we believe in sowing and reaping, right? Right? Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 says, Be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatever a man sows, and that means a woman too, that will he, he will also reap. So we believe in sowing and reaping, right? Nobody ever planted a garden that didn't believe in sowing and reaping. Isn't that right? Yeah. No farmer ever went out and did the work of putting the crop in the field without believing in reaping as well as sowing. Amen. Right? Amen. In Genesis chapter 8, would you open your Bible and look over there with me? Genesis the 8th chapter. Verse 22. When Noah and his family got off the ark, God put a promise in the sky, made him a promise. He will never destroy the earth by a flood again and put the rainbow in the sky. Hallelujah. As a symbol. That's what the rainbow's for. Of God's eternal promise. Of God's faithfulness. And that we can have confidence. That's what the rainbow's for. But notice what he said also. Verse 22. This is what the Lord said to, to Noah. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. Amen. As long as the world is here, seed time and harvest are going to be here. Amen. Now, if you stop and think about it, seed time and harvest is how everything works in this world. Yeah. You, this building is here because of a seed of an idea Amen. that God put in somebody's mind. Yeah. You're here as a result of a seed sown. Amen. If you go to my backyard, you're going to see a, a raised garden bed, and you're going to see a, a squash plant growing in that raised garden bed that has thoroughly surprised Joy and I. It doesn't look at all like we thought a squash plant would look, and it's huge. Its leaves are about, a th they're huge. They're like elephant ears. And I thought they would hang over the the. It's not looking at all like I thought. The leaves are growing up like great umbrellas. And one day it had a blossom and the next day it's got a squash. I mean, it's amazing how they're growing. And with the rain last night, I, I can't have wait. I'm looking forward to a couple of days to see what else it's done. But the, the seed for that plant was, well, this is, I would hold one up, but I'll just act like I'm holding it up. Because if I held one up, you couldn't see it from where you are anyway. It was that small. But it's grown up into that great plant. Every tree around that you see out of a little seed. The biggest bull, 2,000 pound bull that you see came from a little bitty seed. Amen. Seed time and harvest. God works that way. God planted a seed. The Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus in John chapter 12 
said that unless that seed falls into the ground and dies, it abides alone. But he put it in the ground. Guys, if you could put John 12 up there. It said, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. Verse 13, he who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. Jesus went into the ground like a seed. God's seed. And it looked like destruction. Can I get an amen? And that's what it looks like when a seed is sown. It looks like this thing's dead. Oh, but the God of resurrection made that seed germinate. And on the third day, it broke ground. (laughs) Hallelujah. And it has spread out all over the world, this great vine of which we're a part. And every single one of us that have, that are Our God's children have been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of the word of God that lives and abides forever. That seed is alive. Amen. Anybody changed by the word on the inside of them? Yeah, it makes a new person out of you. Now, seed, time and harvest. But let me ask you the question. I'm talking to you right now about the reality that you, you have to do these things by faith. Even commanding angels, you have to do it by faith. Your heart's got to be in it, your spirit in it, confidence in it. Not just playing around with it, not, well, I'm going to see that, I'm going to do this and see if anything happens. No. Seed time and harvest, the word in your heart. But now listen, is it possible for someone, even though God has established seed time and harvest, is it possible for a person to sleep through harvest? And miss out on their harvest. Look with me at Proverbs chapter 10. Now don't get too deep right here. Here sits Bob Ralvis. He's a farmer. Now Bob's not going to do this because I know he's wise. But I do know one farmer who's not a farmer anymore. Because when you went over to his house on harvest day one day, he was sleeping in. Later on in the morning, he was still there. Later on in the morning for a farmer, you know, that's about 7.30. No, it's more like mid-morning. He's still sleeping in harvest time. I know Bob's not going to do that. But in Proverbs chapter 10, but if if he, but he could. How many understand that he could? Come on, there's no trick question. How many understand that, that he could sleep in? He could sleep all day. When harvest is out there, ready to be picked. I've got two tomato plants. I know you never get tired of hearing about my tomatoes. So that's why I keep encouraging you with them. I've got these two tomato plants. And we'll leave out a lot of details. But God did make little green tomatoes. And given enough time, God's going to make big red tomatoes. Hallelujah. Those things are growing. We planted them and they're growing. But you know what? God's not going to make those tomatoes float off the vine and onto my kitchen counter. Sure is quiet in here. Here we're talking about the responsibility of harvesting. Our responsibility for harvesting. See, God, we sow, God grows, and we harvest. We harvest. We have to put action to it. We have to put our energy, our faith with it and take action. I had to engage my spirit with what I said in order for the angels of God to respond. And if you'll do that, if you'll engage and you'll speak and you'll command those angels to go, they'll be your harvest harvesters too. They'll bring stuff in. Is it possible, is it possible for people to sleep through harvest? Could I have just toyed with that checkbook being gone and never addressed that genuinely and powerfully? Absolutely. I could have just drifted along and done without. 
even though it was God's will for me to walk in blessing and you to walk in blessing. Amen. You're blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Listen, what did we read in Galatians 6, 9 or refer to? Be not deceived, God is not mocked. That which a man sows, he will also what? Reap. Reap. What if he's sleeping and not reaping? Or what if he's expecting God to do the reaping for him? God's not... God's, every farmer knows God's not going to bring your harvest in. No farmer is waiting for God to start up the tractor or the combine and bring in the harvest. Is it possible for someone to have sowed and sowed and sowed and end up with nothing or with very little, even though God's called it, caused it to grow and grow and grow? Well, look, let's look at Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4. He who has a slack hand becomes poor. A slack hand means lazy or slothful or idle. Or you think about a tow rope for if you ever were a kid and rode a skateboard and you're like I did and we had the rope tied on the back of the banana seat bicycle and we're riding down the street or, or a tow rope of a, and you're water skiing or on, the back, on a tube and the rope is slack. We know what slack is. And then we know what it feels like when the guy doing the pulling decides he's going to catch up all at once. We want to, it jerks. We want to call him a jerk. He de deals with a slack hand, becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent, the energetic, the active, the steady plotter, the prudent one, becomes rich. Amen. The hand of who? The hand of the guy that sowed? The hand of the guy that goes out to the harvest. There's not mistaken that, that God's going to bring the harvest in. Uh, verse 5, He who gathers in summer is a wise son, but he who sleeps in harvest is a son who causes shame. Is it possible for a believer to sow and sow and sow? See, in a lot of ways, we. I just want to wake us up here. Yeah. Wake us up. Because sometimes uh, it seems as though people think, and, and we can... Talk about the giving side so much. Even about the God's faithfulness to grow it so much. And we leave off the fact that you sowed, God growed, but somebody's got to get out there and harvest. And if you don't harvest, nothing's coming in. Sure is quiet this morning. <laughs> I'm glad you're thinking about this. I'm trying to help us this morning. Look at me at Ecclesiastes chapter 11. And we're talking about the fact that we, we can send angels out. We do it by faith. We take action. We engage our hearts. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 4. He who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. Now, in the Bible for ba in basic English, it says it this way. He who is watching the wind will not get the seed planted, and he who is looking at the clouds will not get in the grain. So is it possible to sow to plant and for God to grow it and it not come into the, the barn? Yeah. If, if, we, if we're distracted. See, think back to my checkbook. Why didn't I do something more serious within two months of losing the checkbook? Well, there's probably a lot of reasons. But for one thing, I had my anniversary trip. Another thing, I had a funeral come up. Another thing, I had a wedding, you know, and that kind of thing. You know, another thing, it was Mother's Day, and I wanted to build an elevated garden bed for my wife. You know, another thing, I'm moving two tons of dirt into the front flower bed and raising the rocks up. 
I mean, it's summertime. We've got to get this stuff done. The weather, the weather, the weather, the conditions, the conditions. See, if I regarded the conditions round about me, my mind was on the conditions. Are you with me this morning? My mind was on the conditions instead of focused on what it needed to be focused on. And I went two months without knowing where that checkbook is. And it wasn't on God's end. Because when I finally acted on the word and acted in the faith that I know in the leading of the Holy Spirit, it, it, they brought it right in. So the harvest wasn't on God's end. And yet I was doing without. He regards the wind. See, we see the sowing part. We understand that if you look out. Because we're in farm country, right? You know, I used to be a painter. You know, you look at the weather report. We going to paint today? Well, you know, we're here. I'm a pastor. Just within the last couple of years, I made a decision one weekend because the weather report was a bad winter storm. I made a decision. See, I usually just wait, wait. I'm kind of a ready aim, 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 aim kind of guy. <laughs> But I said, okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to give people a break and let them know early. So the weather report was bad for Sunday morning. A lot of snow, a lot of bad weather. I just canceled church. Nine o'clock Sunday morning, I'm standing out here. Not a speck of snow on the ground. And no congregation either. Except for the visitors that were coming that day that didn't know we'd cancel church. And see, if we, if we regard the clouds... It'll keep us from sowing. We'll, decide. we'll just forget. We just may forget. We just not put in the effort. Just, it just moves on down the road. Going to do that someday. We never sow the, we never go to the seminar. We never read the book. We never listen to the message series. We never take the course. We never develop the relationship. Never, never sow. Why? Well, the conditions just weren't ever right for it. Now, we understand that if we, if we never sow, it's just foolish for us to think we're going to change our life and have with a harvest, right? I mean, that doesn't make any sense at all. But we overlook the fact that in the same way that if we observe the clouds, we won't sow. If we regard the clouds, we won't harvest either. We won't take the... I don't want to get too heavy. Is it possible for a person to sleep through the harvest? And then is it possible for a person to get distracted by other things and not do, not bring in his harvest, even though the harvest is there available? Yeah. And it's on our end. I want to just stir you up with these thoughts this morning. Hopefully you go out of here and spend some time this afternoon and this week talking over if you're married, if you're in a relationship, talking over with your spouse, with your significant other. Where might we be missing our harvest? Where is God leading us and, and we're not getting it? Look with me at Luke chapter at Luke chapter five. There's a perfect example. Luke chapter five, verse one. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the and here's what I'm talking to you about is that is we're gonna loose angels this morning. We're going to lose angels. We don't have to be anxious. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be living in lack. The word of the Lord for this year is harvest. But how about, and harvest, reaching people for Christ. Amen. How many of you understand that takes finances? How many of you understand we could sleep through all summer and never do anything evangelistic and never reach the people, never reach the harvest that God wanted us to reach? Why? Because we're so caught up with summertime. I mean, when I first came up to, to be the pastor 30-some years ago, one of the guys in the church came up to me when spring came around that first year, and he said, Pastor, you need to understand, when summer gets here, we're gone. And he didn't just mean he and his family. He meant that everybody. He said, we're just, you know, summer short right here in Dubuque. Come on. You understand what I mean? And I get it. Summer short here in Dubuque. <laughs> You know, we want to enjoy everything God's given us, right? 
But if, come on, give me a break. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not selling your camper out from under you. Though my flesh would like to, now that's going. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God. What I'm saying is that, that it's possible for just things to just slip away, to drift, for us to not engage like we need to, when if we would, we'd bring the harvest in. Our lives would change. It's not, we're not missing it on the sowing end. You're a bunch of, a lot of you are givers. You're not missing it on the, on the sowing end. Let's make sure we don't miss it on the harvesting end. Right. Hallelujah. Wouldn't that be a shame? If you just give, 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 and, and, and just, and it'd be on, a, let's go on. So it was, as the multitudes pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, and, and so Jesus was there. He saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from him and were washing their nets. And he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. Now, let's get this. Here were fishermen. They worked the night shift. They'd worked all night, and they caught nothing. And they were back there cleaning their equipment. Cleaning up, checking, it, checking all the knots, getting everything, putting everything away. And here's a preacher that comes up and asks them to use their boat. And so they put out a little bit from the land, and it's just the way sound waves carry. It was like an amphitheater then, just taught from the boat. And then, so they sowed. How many of you agree they sowed? They sowed. I mean, they'd been up all night. They were working hard. I mean, if you're up all night and you're working hard and you're just about, I remember when I was painting with my dad, we'd paint all day. And then, you know, about 15 minutes before quitting time, we'd start washing out brushes and stacking up ladders. And man, it was so nice when we got the last ladder stacked up. You know, maybe if it was a job, we found some bushes to stack them up behind. Or if necessary, we put them back on the top of the truck and loaded them, tied them down. You know, it was so nice. I mean, 90-some degrees out, 80-some degrees out. You've worked all day running up and down ladders. You're hot. You're sweaty. If you've been scraping paint, you've got chips all over. So nice. that Man, it's, I'm done. It's quitting time. Time to go home. These guys are sweaty, they're stinky, they're tired. And it, it's not paid off. And now they're asked to not go home. I mean, we're planning on going home. I'm going to go home. I'm going to, I'm going to eat some ice, drink some iced tea. I'm going to watch a show on television. And then I'm going to go to bed. No, there wasn't any TV. But you understand what I'm saying? They're ready. I mean, they're still there, but their, their minds are probably already halfway home. And he says, let me use your boat. So they, they do it. They let him use their boat. And then in verse 4, it says, when he stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. What's he saying? He's saying, you need to go a little further. You need to work a little harder. You need to reach a little deeper. You need to get out further from your comfort zone. How many of you can see they've already sowed? Now the Lord is speaking to them about how to get their harvest. And notice what Peter said. Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Oh, what a great thing he says next. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. There's the key right there. At your word. Listen, we can work in our own strength. We can toil and labor. It's the earth curse system, Genesis says, because of Adam's sin. But Proverbs 10, says, the blessing of the Lord makes rich. And he adds no sorrow with it. You know, says, see, it's, it's no less God's will you be rich than it is his, his will you be diligent. Amen. If you simply be diligent, your hand will cause you to prosper. Amen. So again, it doesn't go back on the Lord. It goes back to how well are we harvesting? And I want to, we're going to see in a minute the angels are helpers in our harvest. But notice, 
Launch out in the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we've toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, can you all say when they had done this? What, what did they do? They began to harvest at the word of the Lord. See, if we'll listen to the Lord and we'll be led by the Spirit, God will speak to you. And he'll tell you when to move. He'll tell you what to do, where to go, what to say. I remember years ago, I was uh, traveling and building a financial network, a support network for a missionary work in the Philippines. My job was to go into churches representing the, the ministry, give an update of our work in the Philippines, and then minister the word. And the pay schedule that we agreed upon, which I suggested my pay was tied to, to, to the offerings that came in. Well, I went to this big church in Colorado that was already a partner of the, of the ministry, two services on a Sunday morning, and I'm praying on Saturday night, the night before, praying in the hotel room, and the Holy Spirit showed me to get up and, and thank the church, tell the church, thank you for a job well done. They had contributed. We, we built a Bible school over there. And they had contributed to that. And God said, thank you for a job well done. Now, they were already partners. You understand where I'm coming from? My income's tied to their offering. I'm looking. I want an offering. I need an offering. Come on. Don't be carnal. Don't be. Don't look at me that way. I got to put food on the table too, right? And so the Holy Spirit says, Tell them thank you for a job well done. And my mind is saying, I don't want to tell them thank you for a job well done. I don't want their job to be done. I don't want them to be done. You understand where I'm coming from? Nevertheless, <laughs> I got up on Sunday morning. They invited me up to the front. I began to share with them. I said, and the Lord wanted me to tell you, thank you for a job well done. Man, they got thrilled. They were so excited. I was so blessed to be able to share that word with them. The pastor got up when I was done, and he said this. He said, I don't know what we're giving them every month for support, but we just doubled it. I'm the kind of guy, I like to get stuff done. Now, see, you could take that and think all I'm interested in is money, but I'm not. The reason I'm sharing that with you is to help. It's an example of God leading me in the field that I was in, what to say and what to do in the setting in order to be successful. If you're a homemaker, if you're a carpenter, if you're a builder, whatever is your field, if you're a lawyer, if you're a, a, a realtor, whatever your field is, the Holy Spirit will guide you. If you'll listen to him, he'll speak to you and he'll tell you when and what and where and with who and what field. Hallelujah. And you get your combine out there and you bring in the harvest and you rejoice all the way to the bank. Hallelujah. Amen. Not only that, but God gets glorified Amen. and he's pleased and you get to sleep better at night. And your family gets provided for better. And you feel like a more worthwhile provider. Amen. And a more successful... Amen. Amen? Amen. Is it possible for someone to sleep through harvest? Even though they've sowed and God's growed. And they sleep through harvest and not get anything. Yeah. Yeah. But if we'll listen to God and we'll act... Just like I acted, sending out those angels to get that checkbook back. Are you with me so far? Amen. Now, understand this. There are countless angels sent to bring blessings to God's people. There are countless angels. In the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22, it says that we haven't come to a, a fiery thundering mountain with the voice of God that scares the people that hear. We've come to the city of God, the new Jerusalem, to the spirits of just men made perfect. We've come to an innumerable company of angels. 
There's so many angels out there, you can't count them. In 2 Kings 6, the prophet's servant was so scared because the enemy army was camped round about them. And it looked like sure destruction. The prophet said, don't be afraid. Those that be with us are more than those that be with them. And he prayed, open his eyes. And he op- God opened his eyes and the, the, the area round about was filled with angels ready to fight for them. Listen, in, in is John... In Matthew, in Matthew chapter 18, would you look there quickly with me? Matthew chapter 18. Verse 10. Take heed, Jesus said, the people had a bad attitude toward kids. And Jesus to his disciples said this, Take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who's in heaven. And I want you to know you don't lose your angel just because you grow up. Psalm 91 says God has given angels assignment to watch over you. And finally in Hebrews chapter 1, let's let's look there and then we're going to act on the word. Anybody stirred toward harvesting? Amen. Glory be to God. I know a guy. I know a guy that, that a number of years ago sat in my office and gave me a vision for his life that just blew my mind. He was so young and going to excel and achieve and even retired at a very a young age. And I've watched him as he sowed. As he sowed and he's applied himself. And just the other day I was talking with him and he was almost giddy at the amount of money they were bringing in through their efforts. It's just almost ridiculous. The amount of money they're getting paid. What is it? It's the blessing of the Lord. He's harvesting. He sowed. Don't, kid me, don't get me wrong. Financially, he sowed. But he's also sowed into himself, sowed into his field. He's developed. He's walked with the Lord, being led by the Spirit. Hallelujah. And the blessing of the Lord is making him rich. Amen. And it's not just for him. It's for you too. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 1. Talking about the, the preeminence of Christ and how much better he is than angels even says, to which of the angels has God ever said, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? Notice this. The angels are ministering spirits. Ministering spirits sent. Sent for what? Sent out to minister for you. To minister for you. Now, you might not have lost your checkbook. But there's other things in your life that you can assign angels and send angels out to bring you. Bring you help. I remember we were selling a house when we went to Ramah. I was thanking God for angels ministering to the potential buyer. Bringing them in. I remember saying, God, thank you for dealing with his wife if you you need to. Thank you for dealing with her husband if you need to. Thank you for helping them sell, sell their business if they need to. And that's what happened. People from out of state sold their business. And I I remember praying, Lord, and if you need to sell their business and have them bring cash, thank you for doing that. And that's exactly what happened. Angels, you go out and make it happen. Why? They're ministering for us. Now listen, how many believe that today? They're waiting for you. They're waiting for you to command them. Psalm 103 verse 20 says... Bless the Lord, ye as angels, hearkening to the voice of his word. When you speak God's word, they listen. When you speak in Jesus' name, they listen. Hallelujah. Now, in a moment, we're going to receive an offering. We're going to receive an offering, but now listen. The Bible says that the Lord, the Lord owns the cattle on a thousand hills, right? The, The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The Bible says that God said, all the gold is mine and the silver is mine. How many of you know that? 
And listen, he's our father and we're his children. That means that everything is hit, that's his is ours. So we're well able to give. And that's what we're going to do. You, those of you that are here regularly, you know there's many ways to give. You can give online. You can text to give. You can go to the, the website and give. You can give with an envelope and a check on the back of, of the, grab that envelope off the back of the seat. You, know, you can even use a credit or debit card and put the numbers on there. There's a lot of different ways to give. But before we, and so I want us to get ready. It's sewing time. But at the same time, I want us to make a confession. I want us to acknowledge something. And I want us to, to make, to send the angels out. We're going to send the angels out. You're going to send the angels out to bring the harvest in. And they're going to do it. They're waiting to do it. This, this message this morning puts me on the spot in case you don't realize it, but they're waiting to do it. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Say it with me. The Bible says, the world and the fullness thereof is God's. The silver and the gold is the Lord's. The cattle of a thousand hills is the Lord's. And we're children of the Lord. And what's his is ours. And we're well able to give. And so we're going to receive our offering. And we're going to give. And the Bible says, give and it will be given back to you. Good measure and pressed down and shaken together and running over into your bosom. So as I give... I'm triggering my receiving. Angels of God, go out, minister for me, and bring in my harvest. I believe it, so I say it, and I'll see it. See, it's so important that you believe it in your heart, but don't stop there. You have to say it. If you believe you receive something, you'll talk about it. And when you say it, you're like Jesus speaking to that fig tree. And he said, and it died overnight. And he said, if you have faith, you'll say to the mountain, be removed. Hallelujah. Why don't you just look at your lack and say, lack, get out of here. Get out of my life right now. I command you to move. And I see you gone. And I thank you, Father, for the angels of God out at work right now, bringing in my harvest. Do you see it? Hallelujah. Do you see it? Why don't you give God thanks for it? Go ahead and release your faith right now. Come on. Just release your faith right now. Give him thanks for it. Give him thanks for it. Come on. Is that all the thanks you got? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give it. If you see it coming in, let's take a moment. Let's let it be real right here. Real right here. We're not playing with this this morning. Hallelujah. Things are, woo, things are changing. Things are changing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. How many believe things just changed? Now keep on believing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look at that guy standing and praising God. Look at her standing and praising God. How many of the rest of you believe that God's doing something right now? Come on, let's give him praise. Let's hallelujah. Glory to God. Just like we sang. He turned our mourning into dancing. Hallelujah. He gave us beauty for ashes. Oh, glory to God. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. I'm not trying to manipulate anybody, but I'm telling you, praise is the voice of faith. And when you come in on Sunday morning, this can't be just a Sunday morning deal. We're coming in to meet with God. Hallelujah. To do business with him. And I believe things changed. 
Hallelujah. If you believe things change, why don't you join these? Just jump up out of your seat and give God thanks. Come on. Express your faith right now. Release your faith right now. Give him praise and thanks right now. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Now say it after me. Now, angels of God, go out and minister for this church. Bring in the harvest. Thank you for directing our steps, Father. Thank you for leading us by the Spirit. Thank you for giving us opportunities to harvest and keeping us awake. Help so that we see them and we seize them. Go, angels of God. Minister for this church. We receive every need met according to the Word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. You believe it this morning. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. I tell you, the anointing is in this place. God is doing something in this place. Glory to God. I don't want to wrap up just, just too quick. I want us to just, can you lift your voice? And even on behalf of somebody else in this room that God has moved, lift your voice as though it was you getting a breakthrough. He's the God of the breakthrough. As though it was you getting a breakthrough. Use your faith. Add your faith to these others. And thank God for their breakthrough. Hallelujah. Their change. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Woo, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Now let's walk it out. Let's walk it out. Hallelujah. That means we're listening. We're looking. We're seeking the Lord. We're asking him, okay, Lord, what's that mean for me? Where's my harvest? Where's the harvest for me? What step do I need to take? Who do I need to call? Who do I need to talk to? Who do I need to get involved with? Where do I need to go? You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Hallelujah, we're looking. We're walking this out in faith. And God is faithful. And he's, oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm not just blowing hot air. I'm telling you, things got started this morning. <laughs> things changed today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So let's be faithful. Praise the Lord. Give in the offering of the Lord would lead you. Hallelujah. Trust God with us. Believe God with us. Because it's so every need, every need is met. Praise the Lord. And if you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he came and he died as that seed. He bore everything necessary for you to get right with God. And three days later, God raised him from the dead and made him Lord. You don't have to understand everything about it. But in your heart, you bear witness that it's right. And that, if, that you need to make Jesus Lord, to receive him as Lord. You want to do that. Sometimes our lack of understanding gets in the way. Please don't, don't, you'll learn, you'll learn, but follow your heart. Hallelujah. Let's have every head bowed, every eye closed. If you say, and we're going to pray a prayer. I'd like to pray a prayer with you to lead you on into Christ. If you say, Pastor Lauren, I want to pray that prayer. I want to come to receive the Lord this morning. I want to do that. On the count of three, would you raise your hand so that you can come on in? He's the only way. This is the only way to get right with God. But he made it so simple and easy and free for you. Hallelujah. Just believe and act. On the count of three, raise your hand and we'll pray. One, two, three. Go ahead and lift your hand. We're looking all over online. Go ahead and lift your hand. Send us a little chat. Let us know in church. Uh, I know online, we've, there's been times when nobody's raised their hand in the sanctuary and two people got born again online. So we never want to, we don't want to fail to give them an opportunity because they're with us. So, and for practice, so you know how to pray with others. Why don't everybody pray this after me? And if you didn't raise your hand, but you should have or wanted to, go ahead and pray this prayer. The Lord's going to hear you. Pray it from your heart, not just your head. Hallelujah, let's pray. Just say it with me. Dear God in heaven, thank you for what you did for me by sending your son Jesus. All those wonderful things. I receive you, Jesus. I give you my life. Thank you for being Lord. In your name I pray. Amen.
Hallelujah. Have you been blessed by the word today? Praise God.